for a while and for maybe about a hundred years in this country, we all hear collectively, let men decide how we labor. Let men decide how we permit ourselves and each other to labor. I still haven't figured out how that really happened exactly. It never made any sense to me. Because like my girl Sojourner Truth said, something like, it's between God and a woman. Man ain't got nothing to do with it. Except they kind of do, don't they? At least sometimes. So as my shift on labor and delivery started that night, Sarah was mine, my patient. She was laboring alone. The baby's dad was away on business somewhere. And she had gone into labor and had to head to the hospital by herself. She was soon ripe and completely dilated, ready to start pushing with a nice, powerful, regular contraction pattern. For a little while there, I was doing hip contractions and she'd scream harder. So they were good, strong contractions for a while. And then she got to complete, means she's fully dilated and ready to start pushing. And she just completely stopped progressing. The contractions just stopped. I couldn't find anything wrong anywhere. Baby was head down, no hands or feet in the way. She appeared to be pushing in an effective way. She was very cooperative and willing to do anything I ask. Baby just wasn't descending. So I kept making suggestions, right? Moving her around into different positions, walking, squatting, hands and knees. Baby wasn't moving. There was nothing in the way. There was no reason. It just wasn't happening on my time schedule. I remember reminding myself, we are so fine. Baby's heart rate looks great. Nothing's in the way. Nobody is stuck. We just need to be patient. That's why we call this labor. Because it's hard work. I put her on the edge of the rocking chair so she could still move but be supported and gave her a minute. I backed off into a corner so she could relax and feel alone in the dark, waiting for my next good idea to come, trying to think of what was best, what she needed next. So here's the truest sentence I can say about labor. Always, women need to feel completely supported, unafraid, and surrounded by whatever their version of a positive family is. Or sometimes, maybe they need to feel the exact opposite. Very focused, deep down in a black primal hole in the dark, turned inward all alone. Both are exactly what they need but you never know who's going to be who until you get to that doorstep. There is actual old fashioned bubbling magic at work here. Brain chemistry that even the most modern science doesn't really understand yet. Sometimes all you need to make a baby appear is dark and silence. Some women just need quiet, intense internal focus. You just need to catch the baby before it hits the floor. That's how some women are wired. And that ends in a raucous success with a wet baby in my hands. But some women, some women actually need you to scream in their face to get busy and push that little kumquat out now. What they need is your focused intensity and energy. But sometimes what actually helps is perspective. Remember back in the day when we used to ride around in airplanes for fun, to travel for pleasure or visit relatives? Remember that? Seems crazy now, right? The captains of the planes I used to get off of so sick to my stomach, but happy to be alive. I'd thank them as I passed for not murdering us all effectively. They'd say, you're welcome. It was a beautiful day for a flight. And actually, it was. I was just too worried about puking on my shoes, or worse yet, puking on my neighbor's shoes, to notice and enjoy. See? Perspective. The point is, it's not always a beautiful day for a flight, but it is always a beautiful day to have a baby. And that's what I always tried to help my laborers remember, that they aren't alone, that they have my company and they will to the bitter end, and that this is actually what it takes to make a baby, what they're going through right now, right now. And that it really is okay for them to puke on my shoes. They're made of rubber. I'll hose them off in the driveway before I walk in the door tonight. Puke away if that's what it takes. Plus, as an added bonus, you can actually puke your baby out. I've seen it happen. It's not at all pretty, but it works. 
So back to my patient that we are not calling stuck. The one I left alone on the edge of the rocking chair in the dark, the one who nothing was working for. You want to know what happened? The absolute most predictable of all things. No, not a C-section. Her partner finally showed up and ran over to her in the dark and kneeled in, down in front of her sitting in that rocking chair and threw his arms around her. And then they were both sobbing and rocking and rocking and sobbing together. Now, I hadn't been doing this for very long, but I knew enough to reach for the gloves because the hug lasted all of 90 seconds. And then she had one mammoth contraction. And I had to shove my way between them to catch the baby's head before it hit the floor. She just needed him, at least her hormones did. And I am in no way saying that this is the best or the only way to have a baby. It was just a pretty way to end the night. And it just goes to show you that labor will do what labor wants to do when labor wants to do it. And after everything, after all my good nursing interventions, probably I probably really mattered very little. It was all mom and dad, which is actually our very most optimal outcome. See, at least that time, I think man had something to do with it. And I think Sojourner would have been okay with that too. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs> Jill, I'm so glad you had fun with that. I, Sorry. I, I know I had fun with it as well. Uh, and I'm sure folks at home did too. Uh, a theme in your story is um, anticipation and expectation of certain things. And you, you kind of know what's going to happen. Um, what surprises you still in, in this work? I got to tell you, that is just not true. You really don't <laughs> ever really know what's going to happen. You okay. Until you've got that baby in your hands... It's still a crapshoot. All right. Okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Appreciate that, that transparency. So um, Jill, thank you for, for ending our evening uh, with, with that lovely story.